Well, hello, Chaplain Corps. I am Chaplain Colonel Ruth Naomi Segrist, and I am just delighted to be here in San Antonio, Texas, with our 17th Chief of Chaplains, Chaplain Major General Retired Howard Stendhal, affectionately known to some as H. And so we are delighted to hear his story, and I know you will be encouraged by the words that he will share with us. Welcome, Chaplain Stendhal. Thank you, sir, for giving us of your time. I'm honored that you invite me. Thank you, Chaplain Segrist. It's a privilege to be here. I'm honored by your invitation. Thank you, sir. Well, sir, let's start off with your call to ministry and then your call to military ministry, in particular, the Air Force versus other services. Tell us your uh, ecclesiastical organization and how did that formation come about, sir? I'm delighted to speak to that. I'll begin by saying I think I'm one of the luckiest chaplains who has ever worn the uniform, primarily because I always wanted to be a military chaplain. From the earliest times, even of cognition in my life, as a little child, I wanted to be a military chaplain. Very few people have that kind of vocational specificity in their young years. Yes. But I was one of uh, the three brothers in the family growing up. Our father was a Navy guy. He was an enlisted uh, electrician's mate. We played ship when we were little boys growing up. We would put on dad's uniform or any uh, elements of uniform we could devise. And we would play ship. I'm the youngest of all the brothers. Hence, I was never the skipper of the ship. <laughs> when we played, they would give me some rather not influential job to do in our play. And eventually, I became the chaplain. Ah. From the, the joke in the family, and I've shared this through the years of active duty when I was asked this particular question about formation and vocation. The joke in the family is I started taking up offerings when I was three years old. <laughs> we, we would play church, whether aboard ship or whether whatever scenarios little boys devise in their play. From the earliest times of my life, this is what I wanted to do. Wow. It is required in the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, where I am one of the members of the clergy roster, that one serve as a parish pastor prior to any specialization, mm -hmm. whether it be academic or some ministry beyond the parish. So I wound up serving in Texas and in Wisconsin, congregations of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, or its antecedent body, the, the American Lutheran Church, for mm -hmm. eight years. I love being a parish pastor. <laughs> Initially, I thought this is a requirement. Mm -hmm. It's something I almost have to overcome or a speed bump on the way to being a military chaplain. Mm -hmm. But I loved it. And I think it, it vindicates mm -hmm. the requirement in the Department of Defense that our clergy who serve in uniform have experience yes. in their faith community prior to coming on active duty or in the reserves. But reserves chaplain, I think a reserve chaplain can come directly mm -hmm. and find further formation in their part-time ministry in uniform. But I love being a parish pastor. Yeah. In those years, there was a quota system mm. that we were allowed to come in according to denomination. Uh, and uh. the initial uh, offer came to me really in the Air Force Chaplain Corps in 1984. Okay. And seized upon it. I was thinking maybe I would go to graduate school to study and I prayerfully considered our opportunity. And they said, your initial assignment will be in San Antonio, Texas. And I said, I will support and defend the Constitution <laughs> of the United States cool. against all I mean is foreign domestic. And I think it, it really was one of the greatest fulfillments of my life to have the ecclesiastical endorsement of my faith community and to come and serve the Air Force. Whatever service would have called, I would have been honored to serve. But this Air Force thing worked out just fine. Yes, it did. And we are thankful. Thank you. We are thankful. 